ourselves before you now. Bless us and take over our lives, both body, mind and soul, so that at this incarnation of your Son, which we celebrate at this time after Christmas, we may be blessed to be yours and be a blessing to others. Go before us, good Lord, in all our doings, Feather us with your continual help, so that our works begun may continue and end in you, and that at the last, having done our duties in so far as it lies on us, we may be acceptable to your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A good morning to you all in various homes as well as in our church on this first Sunday after Christmas. We continue with the theme, the incarnation of Christ. And of course, the lessons are Isaiah 61, 10 to chapter 62, verse 3. The Psalm is 148. The New Testament lesson is Galatians 4, 4 to 7. And the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. created us in your own image 
and yet more wonderfully restored us. As Jesus Christ came to share our humanity, so may we share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in the unity of one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our text is from Luke chapter 2, verse 52, and it reads as follows. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. The story of Jesus, according to St. Luke, is a practical research written in a fine Greek of an educated person. Of course, Luke the physician is Dr. Luke, um, the medical doctor. Also, not only verse 52, but also verse 40 of the same chapter 2 tells us of the child Jesus growing and waxing strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. We all have been children, and perhaps given the privilege of raising children, and we remember our stories as we grow and some we are reminded of. We have little stories to tell which makes us observe different personalities as well as characters in children and people. So, um, some of those characters are welcoming but some are unloving and repulsive. Some violent and untrustworthy and undesirable. But in times past, the principle was that of King Solomon in raising up children. Spare the rod and spoil the child. And of course, in times past, the principle was originally referring to corporal punishment. For Jesus and the little children, it means more of an embrace and love. And of course, in Mark we hear, when he embraced the children, he laid his hands on them and blessed them. <coughs> and I think, excuse me, I think this blessing, of course, is a blessing so that the child can grow. When we utter blessings of our children, our children grow better than us uttering scolding and bitterness and shouting at them and screaming at them. True love entails discipline, of course, and in it given by instruction and not by a rod. For children of the kingdom, instruction should point them always to union with Christ. When we raise our children, we should of course, introduce Christ at a very early stage so that as they grow, seeing us praying together, and remember, the family that prays together stays together. Let us now look close at the Incarnation. What does Incarnation mean in Christian theology? It refers to the process of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, being made man, though he is God and the second person of Trinity. According to John's Gospel, the Logos became flesh and dwelt among us, and the Logos is Word, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth, and grace being an undeserved favor and truth is about ourselves and our sinfulness and about who we are and about who Jesus is. He was born in the womb of Mary the Virgin, who then theologically was referred to as Theotokos. Theotokos only means the carrier or the bearer of God. And Jesus then grew from infancy to childhood 
and to a young, energetic Galilean rabbi whose college was itinerant. In other words, he had no built college. He would teach people wherever he is, whether then, as he was moving from place to place, whether it was on the shores of the Sea of Galilee and to the mountain of the Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount, or Mount Garrison and Hermon, or the Mount of Transfiguration. And finally, of course, as we are all aware, uh, he finally finished on Mount Calvary for our salvation with the sacrificial giving of his life for the sins of the whole world and also of ourselves. Both his human and divine natures are living in him without a clash. And theologically then, the, 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 the physical nature or the human nature of Jesus and the spiritual nature of Jesus living together in him without clash, this is called hypostatic. That is H-Y-P-O-S-T-A-T-I-C, hypostatic union, without diminution or mixture, but rather the identity of each has been preserved and staying peacefully in the life of Jesus. When he rose from the dead, he had a resurrection body, which is beyond human limitations and boundaries. He ascended and seated at the right hand of God to intercede for us. We believe he comes again as Advent reminded us to bring completion of our salvation and also to be the charge of human race. This is our faith. Now let's look a little bit closer into this incarnation. Uh, Dr. Luke says, Jesus grew. And how did he grow? He grew in four dimensions of life, according to Luke. And of course, First Peter 2 verse 21 says, He came into the world so that we follow in his footsteps. Let us look and learn then these dimensions or phases of his growth. First, Jesus grew in wisdom. And the Greeks call this one Sophia. And wisdom is what God has given us as a gift it is the first of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, the bishop, prays over confirmation candidates. And of course, if you want to read about them, you go to Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 2. And the Spirit of the Lord helped Jesus grow in his young earthly life. And the wisdom that he had to stand not only his earthly parents, Joseph and Mary, but also at 12 years, teachers of the law were amazed at his questions and answers in the temple, answering with understanding. We all know his encounter with the Pharisees, the priests of the Jews, and also with the scribes, the lawyers of the Jews, and Sadducees, a group which did not believe in resurrection. He silenced them. But for your own interest and my interest, I always like to note the encounter with Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews, who was a Pharisee. And if you can read that one in John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21, you will do so for your own interest and growth. And then now coming to growth, looking at Jesus, God commanded that children be taught to increase and be guided in their wisdom. The mission schools in this country came and guided this carefully, though not without criticism. But the leaders we saw in Dada Nelson Holishatra Mandela's caliber were products of mission schools where the motto was God first, 
others next and self last. Instead now people easily burn schools into ashes when complaining for a tarred road or a clinic that they need in their communities. It is so sad to disrupt the education of our children by unionists all because God no longer rules and governs our hearts in South Africa. The church with her prophetic voice need not to be tired but to continue vigorously the struggle against sin and corruption as well as greed in our beloved country so that our education can be put on par again and that our children can also be educated and have a character. Because what is important here is the character, the way people behave. And education is supposed to do that, to mold our character towards sensitivity and love towards one another. Let us continue then and look after wisdom and look at stature. The stature here means Jesus grew physical. What did he eat to nourish his body? He was carefully minding what goes into his mouth with exercises because he walked most of his ministry and drinking a lot of water, eating bread and fish. These days of health awareness, we need to observe health eating, healthy eating habits and we need to exercise with good hygienic uh, 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 conducts especially with COVID-19 pandemic around us. Washing our hands, sanitizing, putting on the mask at all times and also keeping the distance because this killer disease is still among us and also even if the vaccine is found, um, I heard over the radio that uh, it is still going to, 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 to be given to those in the front line of health like nurses and doctors. All right then, be careful then, look after that body and uh, to keep your body fit and slim is also part of your responsibility. And then the third thing, Jesus had favor with God. And favor with God means grace, in other words, an undeserved favor and is favor alongside God as the Greek presents it. The Greek presents para. So is, is, is this kariti para theo? It's favor alongside with God. In other words, what this implies is that the spiritual dimension of our life and our faith should go with God in fellowship for action and witness to the world. It is God's will that every human being be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is Jesus, and Jesus is the liberating truth himself to liberate us from the life of centeredness and selfishness. The last dimension is favor with people. Of course, God created us not to live in isolation, uh, but to live with other people. God created us to make us a community. He made us a kingdom of priests to stand and serve before our God. That is a community. And the church is the glimpses of that kind of community. When Jesus Christ comes to establish his kingdom, we shall actually see that community. And of course, for now, my dear fellow believers at St. Albans, you can read Romans 12 and compare this with Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 17, where the code of Christian conduct, St. Paul tries to spell it out. In conclusion, we have now learned how our Lord fully partook of our nature in mind, that is uh, wisdom, in body, that is stature, in spirit, that is favor with God, 
and in social life that is favor with people. He grew a balanced life, like the four wheels of the car, pumped and measured accordingly. Then that car runs smoothly. It does not disturb the driver on his steering wheel. So must be our lives as Jesus inside us with his spirit drives us along to be a blessing to others and also to help minister to others, especially for those in dire needs. We are also so called to look at these four aspects of our life. He came to leave an example for us to follow in his footsteps. A mature Christian seeks and asks God in prayer to grow to maturity, being sensitive of himself and also of others. Since I came among you, I have searched for that love and I have tried to establish it. And where I have erred, uh, I want you to uh, accept my sincere apology there. But the search was for forgiveness and also showing remorse wherever I may have gone wrong. When such then reconciliation happens among us, and then we look for, we need to strive and establish that, that, that uh, reconciliation, encouraging the good in every fellow Christian and also human being we meet. Of course, we meet to part and part to meet. But let me tell you, it is sad when we have to part. I don't like it. Well, it's better when we meet. But I'm not far, I mean, kids fish, and hopefully we shall see one another. And maybe when Sharon is tired or she goes on leave with their assistant, then they can ask me, to come and help if in the parish I will be, I will not be used. But I will not forget you. And I think um, I have shared your love and I've said a mouthful uh, in the vestry and also seeing that this be my last address in the ministry, our rector Sharon direct, directs I am filled with gratitude, St. Albans Church, for looking after us in the time of our sojourn, sojourning among you. Stay in the love of Christ for yourselves and one another, and keep up the good work the Lord has called you to do. To God be the glory, dominion, power, and majesty on earth and in heaven above and to all eternity. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours at this Christmas time and always. The Lord loves you. He has called you. He will never abandon you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always go then in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ, in the name of christ. amen, amen. amen.